Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Workplace Strategy Summit hosted by Catapult Systems. As you can see, the name of this presentation is How to Improve Your Analytics Maturity in Three Easy Steps. But first, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Seth Warner, and I serve as a managing consultant and technical lead within our data and AI practice. I've been with Catapult for seven years, and I've spent the last 16 years of my career in the data and analytics space. Much of my background is in enterprise data warehousing and analytics, hence why I'm speaking about this topic today. All right, so let's look at the agenda. As the name of the presentation indicates, there are three basic steps that we're going to cover. First, we will explore various ways that you can measure the current state of analytics within your organization. Then we will discuss some good strategies for how to design the target state that you're aiming for. And finally, I will outline some very, very basic steps that you can take to get started. But before we get started, let's take a quick look at this. This is Catapult's digital workplace maturity model. And as you can see, it is a five tiered model that exists across nine different categories. For this presentation, I want to call your attention to the last one, analytics. Now, I'm not going to read every single item here, but it is worth visiting the high and low ends of the spectrum. It's not very difficult to imagine an organization with high level of analytics maturity. In such an environment, data is well managed, it's easily accessible, it's fast performing and reliable. And on the other end of the spectrum, of course, is a low level of analytics maturity. Uh, in such an organization, data would be mismanaged, it'd be hard to find, unreliable, and there would be multiple versions of truth. Naturally, most organizations fall somewhere in between and a catapult specifically within the data and AI practice, we frequently assist our clients in their efforts to increase their overall analytics maturity. And this presentation is largely the distillation of those experiences into a succinct presentation. So let's jump right in. And as I mentioned previously, the first step is to measure your current state. Before I get into the content itself, a quick plug to scan the QR code in the bottom left corner of this presentation. And that will give more information on how Catapult Systems can help you get started. Now, cliche as it may sound, with these types of initiatives, it is true that before you go somewhere else, you must first know where you are. And a good first step is to simply understand what tools and technologies your organization is using to manage its data. These icons represent some of the more common platforms that we see with our clients. SQL Server, Power BI, Azure SQL, and Synapse are just some examples. Furthermore, these systems contain a lot of valuable metadata that you can capture. This list contains just some of the useful data points that are worth looking into. And as you're working on measuring your current state, another important concept is this distinction between a live and static inventory. One thing that I see often is that clients have a really robust collection of information about their environment, but it's primarily static information. So this can include documentation, screenshots, wikis, architecture diagrams, which are all useful artifacts, but they have a limited value in that they require somebody to continually update them. Another way to examine the details of your systems is through a live inventory, which can be achieved through Azure Purview. This is a technology that in short gives you complete visibility to all the systems within your data landscape, hence the picture. Now, if Purview is not something that's at your fingertips, there are other ways to retrieve this data. Native APIs, system tables, and other examples, for instance, are endpoints that we commonly use. And finally, quantify, quantify, quantify. And what I mean here is that, of course, getting a live inventory of your data landscape is really useful, but it's very important that this information is quantified. So knowing how much data you have and the volume that exists and where it exists is really critical to understanding your data landscape. Okay, so everything we've covered already has to do with a quantitative assessment, but equally as important is a qualitative assessment. This is an example of a question that would be useful in polling your organization. 
the reason that it's so useful is because on paper, your organization may seem to have a very well managed and very mature analytics environment, but for your end users, however, their experience could be quite different. So providing questions like this across a good sample of users within your organization can be really valuable. This way you can provide a questionnaire across a variety of different categories, and then ultimately aggregate all of this data to see a kind of quantitative summary of a qualitative assessment of your analytics ecosystem. Very important. Okay, so at the end of this step of measuring, you should have a really good command of these questions, just the, the basics of who, what, why, where, and how. In short, you really should have left no stone unturned and ensure that you have a very clear understanding and awareness of everything that exists within your data ecosystem. Once all of this is complete, the next natural step is to begin designing your target system. Okay, now with any target architecture, one of the first questions to ask is whether it's a migration or a greenfield deployment. And most of our engagements are somewhere in between. They're a, a hybrid style, but in either case, it's really important to understand what do you want to keep and what do you want to remove? Keeping aspects of an existing architecture that are working well is perfectly fine, but simply understanding what you want to keep is a really good place to start. And it is vitally important to design your architecture with the end in mind. So put another way, the larger purpose of any data platform is to transform raw data into actionable information that empowers an organization's users to make informed decisions. And thus every decision that you make about what tools and technologies to invest in within a larger information systems ecosystem really should be compared to this larger goal. Okay, so here are a few other key design tenets for assembling a target architecture. Number one, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So in other words, there are a variety of tools to complete any job. You could perform data transformation with Excel VBA macros, but it does not mean that you should. It's really important to explore alternatives and to make sure that you're choosing the best tool for the job that you're looking to complete. Another key aspect of this that Catapult cons consultants always take into consideration is cost and performance. Because obviously, if money didn't matter, it would be really easy to just throw it at a problem and make it go away or to very easily provide an overkill solution. But cost effective solutions require a bit more nuance and a bit more finesse. Quantifying your targets, of course, is very important. There's little point in taking all of that time to measure the current state of your environment, unless you're going to leverage that to set goals for your new target system. So for instance, you may want targets around performance, cost, usage, storage, and even user sentiment. And finally, I have in quotes, can I ex expert to Excel on here? Because that is arguably one of the most common questions you get when deploying anything new within a data architecture. My point here is that you could build the most sophisticated, modern, elegant technological solution, but unless you have designed it with your end users in mind, it could all be for naught. 